So welcome everybody to our continued discussion of sequences. And so in this video, we'll talk about the convergence of sequences. So when we talk about convergence of sequences, what that is kind of most related to for a topic that you may have seen is the limit of functions as x, rather in this case instead of n, as x goes off to infinity. So in a way it kind of looks like a horizontal asymptote. of a particular function. Now, when we talk about horizontal asymptotes, kind of the one thing that really kind of comes to mind is if we have these functions that our y is equal to one over x. Now, for this one, we say that we've got a horizontal asymptote at zero because if we look at the limit as x heads off to infinity of one over x, that thing, for all intents and purposes, looks like it's going to zero. Now, the function never actually gets there, so it never hits zero. But if we wait long enough, we will get arbitrarily close to zero and will stay there as we get further and further down the x-axis. The same is kind of going to be true when we talk about convergence of sequences. So the convergence of sequences are going to be pretty similar to that. So actually, let's look at an honest to true definition of, the conver of a convergent sequence. So for this, suppose that somebody gives us a sequence a sub n. And this is going to be a sequence n goes from 1 up to infinity. So it just goes on. And so I am imagine this thing is a1, a2, a3, and so on and so on, and it's going on forever. Okay. Well, a definition is that we say that the limit of the sequence a sub n for n going from 1 to infinity is a value L if and only if. And here we go. For every epsilon greater than zero, there exists an N such that if n is greater than or equal to n, then the absolute value of the difference between a sub n and so the nth term of our sequence and l is going to be less than epsilon. Okay. So this gives us the true definition of what it means to have a convergent sequence. Now, what is this really saying and how this kind of compares to the limit of our horizontal asymptotes that we were talking before? Here, our index is really kind of taking on the value of, um, taking on the role of x in that situation. So when we say, um, if I kind of pick some arbitrary value, so I can make this thing as small as I want it to be, so that's my epsilon, I can make it as small as I possibly want to be. This says that if I wait long enough, so there will exist an n. So that existing n means if I wait long enough. So if I wait long enough, then for every um, sequence element past that. So if n is greater than or equal to n, so this is saying any sequence element past a sub n. Okay, so I've got a sub n, so now I'm looking at all of the sequences 
all the sequence elements past that, that if I look past that, then the distance, the distance that I find, so what is this thing? This absolute value is really going to be my distance between my sequence and L, that my distance between my sequence and L is going to get arbitrarily small. So I can make this thing as close as I possibly want to get. I may never actually get to L, but for all intents and purposes, I can get as close as I want to. And this is where we're really mimicking um, what we're seeing with the sequences in comparison to the limits of, of the horizontal asymptotes for our function. Now, for example, we can take the sequence. Suppose we take the sequence a sub n just being 1 over n for n greater than or equal to 1. Now, kind of comparing this to our horizontal asymptote, or for our function before, when we had our function y is equal to 1 over x, we're really kind of imagining that the element in our sequence, we can actually imagine our sequence as living on this function. So if we had values at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on and so on, then our sequence that we're generating can say that, well, our first term is a1. He's going to live right there. Then our second term of our sequence lives there. Third term of our sequence lives there. Fourth is there, and fifth is there, and so on and so on. So as we would extend this curve, so if we imagine kind of extending this curve indefinitely, then what happens, we just get elements of our sequence that show up as we move along this particular curve. And so we can imagine our sequence as living on this function. And so in this case, our limit would be the same as the limit of the function. And so we would have, maybe as n goes off to infinity, our sequence a sub n is going to go to zero as n heads off to infinity. So this is kind of another way of saying that the limit as n goes to infinity of our sequence a sub n of 1 over n is just going to be 0. So for all intents and purposes, this thing really does behave exactly as our limits of our horizontal asymptotes of our functions from which we're kind of familiar already. So when our sequence doesn't converge, sequences which do not converge we say the sequence diverges. Okay. Now, kind of continuing with that analogy of the sequence living on a particular curve, if I had a sequence that looked like 2 plus um, 3 to the n power, okay? So if I had a sequence that looked something like that, so 2 plus 3 to the n power, well, what is this thing really looking like as a function itself we would kind of recognize this as at least this part is reminiscent of our exponential function y is equal to 3 to the x. And so what this other part that comes in here, our 2, is just going to be a horizontal a vertical shift of that function. So we're going up 2 units. And so really up here at 2... I would have a horizontal asymptote like this, but because our base is bigger than one, we would really have a function that's doing something like this. And so as we move off to infinity, 
what happens, so our elements are living on the positive side of the axis. So we've got elements here at one, two, three, and so on. Our sequence lives here and here and here. And so what happens then as we let that um, n go off to infinity, same thing happens as we let x go off to infinity. That in that case, our function is going to head up to positive infinity. And so our limit in this case, we don't have one. So a sub n is going to head off to infinity as n heads off to infinity. So we would say that the limit as n goes off to infinity of 2 plus 3 to the n is going to be infinity or the sequence diverges. So this is kind of one way in which the sequence diverge. Now, where this, um, we get something that's even a little more general than just looking at things as continuous functions, we could have something like this. If I defined a sequence, a sub n, which just looks like minus 1 to the n power. If I write that out, what happens, a1 is just going to be minus 1. a2 is minus 1 squared, which is 1. a3 minus 1 cubed, minus 1. a4 minus 1 to the fourth is 1. And so if I just kind of kept this going, if I plotted this sequence at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, and so on, and so on. Well, what I find is that this sequence will really just bounce between. So for the first one, I have negative 1. For the second one, I have 1. For the third one, I have negative 1. For the fourth one, I have 1. For the fifth one, I have negative 1. For the sixth one, I have 1. And so I just kind of end up with this bouncing pattern of minus ones and plus ones. So in this case, um, my sequence is also going to diverge because it never actually gets close to any particular value. Okay. So this sequence, this sequence, never gets close to a particular value and so doesn't converge. Okay, so this thing will diverge even though it doesn't ever head off to infinity or head off to negative infinity. It will just bounce between different values, never really getting close to anything in particular. It just kind of bounces back and forth forever. And so this is another example of a divergent, divergent sequence. A divergent sequence which doesn't necessarily go off to positive infinity or negative infinity. Now, in fact, if we kind of look at that last sequence, that minus 1 to the n, can we imagine that thing as living on a particular continuous function? Well, we can. So kind of the question, really, does this sequence live on a continuous function. Well, in fact, we can say that it does, and um, the sequence, one way of kind of writing that, writing the continuous function for which that thing is going to live, um, we can make it, we can make it something like f of x being cosine of pi x.
And so that if we take, so where, what does this look like?